connected appliance. But before I even just jump into what we have available, the theme of tonight is connectivity. So what are some of the expectations that you have when I tell you that the appliances in a kitchen are now Wi-Fi connected? What do you think they should be able to do? Send what you have in your refrigerator when you go All right, that's a good one. Take the temperature of your food. All right, what else? Tell you when it's ready. Tell you when it's ready. Yeah. Maybe be able to send you notifications, be able to control it from an app. What if I told you we could go beyond that and now that we have new integrations, you could even just voice command every appliance in your kitchen and you can even ask it questions. Sound pretty fun? Yep. All right, I see that a lot of you are still really far in the back. Can we get you guys to actually come, come over here a little bit closer? I don't have one of the largest iPads, so I'm gonna tilt it over here so I can show you a little bit better. But Gen Air, as part of the Whirlpool Corporation umbrella of brands, um, has been in the connectivity environment for, I don't know, probably three years now. Yeah. We had some trial runs with some washers, and our very first integration was with Nest. So what's cool about the integration with Nest is that based on the thermostat function, if Nest um, already knows that you have something going in the oven, like a turkey, it's four hours high heat, it can automatically adjust your thermostat so that it doesn't get hot in your kitchen. Um, Nest being able to also run diagnostics for when power consumption is more expensive or not was able to make suggestions like, hey, maybe wash your laundry at this certain time of night and it'll be cheaper for you. So that's one that we already had going. Now as far as Gen Air is concerned, what we're going to be demoing here is the functionality of the app. So you have a full touch screen on your wall ovens. We've also got a connected refrigerator right now. Through the end of the year, we're going to be launching the rest of the connected appliances, including dishwashers um, and more ranges. But from the app, you can see all of the same settings that you have on the wall oven. So essentially, you just connect that to your home network. You download the Jenner app through the Play Store or the App Store, whatever mobile type of device you're using. And then once you create your username, you can add all of your connected appliances to that app. Now, if you have two homes and you've got a Gen Air oven in each one, that's fine. You can just give your ovens different names so you know which one you're looking at. So if we go in here to our oven, what we're actually going to do right now is we are going to bake these cookies by commanding it from the oven. So what I did already is I went to the oven, I connected it to Wi-Fi, I added it to my app, and then I hit remote start on the oven. What Remote Start does is it gives me the ability to not only see all of the functions of my oven, which you can see all the time, but it gives me the ability to start and stop it remotely as well. I don't have to be on, my, on the same Wi-Fi network as the oven to start and stop it. Once I've enabled Remote Start, I can be at work, at the library, or maybe in the car driving home, and I can go ahead in here and tell it to start preheating, for example. So it's already on Remote Start. So, Heather, would you pop those cookies in for me? Are we already preheated? Um, no, we're going to do it on a no preheat. It'll break the thing. Okay, so you'll, you'll actually see Heather. Now, what's going to happen here is she's going to manually interact with the oven, so she's going to open the door. And when you manually interact with it, it breaks Remote Start. That's for security purposes, because if I'm cooking something from the app and someone in the home goes to interact with it, there can only really be one person cooking at a time. So go ahead you and go ahead and start from the iPad, and then I'll just put it in as soon as you hit start. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that so we don't have to go back in. So I'm going to go here in the app. I'm going to hit set oven. And then I'm going to scroll over to my no preheat. Now, it does have a culinary center with a bunch of different options um, that you can choose from. But since I want to use the no preheat function, I'm going to set it to 350. I'm going to hit finish. And then I'm going to hit start. Now you'll notice over there, if you're looking at the oven, that it's going to go ahead and it's going to start. Now that it's started, we can open the door without canceling. And it'll continue. Pretty simple, right? Mm -hmm. So. While we're in here, a couple of other things that you can do is you can go into the culinary center. So I will show you that. Back, actually, while we're cooking, 
is this is the screen that it's going to show us. So you'll have, you'll have a progress bar, and that's where the little flame is as it starts the cooking. The progress bar will complete. You'll be able to go into the culinary center from your mobile device, which has pictures and a full walkthrough of how to cook something. So if you were to pick cookies through the culinary center, it would show you a picture of the cookies, ask you what type of cooking bakeware you're using, um, if it's an insulated tray, a dark color tray, or a lighter color tray, because that depends, um, that's gonna alter the temperature a little bit. And it'll even show you how to arrange the racks and which rack to put your cookies on so that the oven does a perfect job. You can also, through the app, go in and create recipes. I, for example, have a favorite recipe for lasagna where I bake it and then I broil it for a little bit so it gets crunchy on top. And then I leave it on a keep warm just in case I'm entertaining. That way, whenever we're ready to have dinner, I'll just grab the lasagna. So you can pre-program creations in here and give it an individual name. So I can put those three different steps in with a timer, name it Flora's Lasagna, That'll automatically get sent to my oven and I'll be able to start it from the app as well. That's amazing. So far so good? Yes. Mm -hmm. So these are kind of things that you would expect to be able to do, right? Save some recipes, pick from a cookbook, maneuver it from an iPad or a mobile device. It's kind of cool that you can even have access to it when you're not even in your home. But now we're able to integrate not only with Nest, but with Google Home and Amazon Alexa. So what's interesting about these integrations is that it's a full three-way sync. You can ask it to do things on your appliances for you once you have them integrated. On an oven, you can tell it to start a preheat. You can ask it for an update on how much time is left in a cooking process. You can tell it to stop. You can ask it questions about your appliances as well. You can say, for example, Google, what is the model and serial number of my Gen Air oven? and it'll be able to recall it for you. You can say, Alexa, what is the water filter I need for my Jenner refrigerator? She can tell you that, and if you have it connected to a Prime account, she can order it for you too. As these integrations get more and more intelligent, the best part about having connected appliances is that the appliance that you purchase on day one doesn't become obsolete because we have the ability to continuously push updates to that technology, just like the operating systems on your phone. So if in the future, um, somebody said something about cataloging ingredients. If in the future the cataloging of ingredients becomes a possibility so that you know what's in your refrigerator, we'll push an update to the appliance for that. If in the future um, Amazon Prime and ordering, I think it's called, what is it called, pantry? Um, if that becomes something that we can integrate, we'll just update the refrigerator software. And then just like that, as technology changes, we will be riding the curve as well. So ultimately, you can do pretty much anything with your connected appliances. Now, if you actually flip the handout that we have to the back, we have a few frequently asked questions that are on here, and some of them that I just wanted to highlight. Probably the biggest one, and a lot of consumers are gonna ask this. I want one of these premium appliances. Um, I really like the touch screen on it. I like the culinary center, but I don't want to fully connect my home. In this group, that seems kind of wild to us, because why wouldn't you want to? But if you don't want to connect your home, that's fine. All of the functions of the oven, culinary center, creating your favorites, you'll still have access to all of those. You just won't be able to do voice command, and you won't be able to remotely start it from a mobile device. So at the end of the day, these are still appliances. You can still interact with them completely manually, but there's a universe of possibilities that the Internet of Things gives us. Now. Um, how many of you actually use a mobile device or look up a recipe before you start cooking? You do? I almost always, this iPad, Heather saw me, I, I doused it in Lysol before we started because there's usually a little bit of flour in my home button left over. This is always in the kitchen with me. So being that you have a library of preset recipes and you can save some favorites, that doesn't account for all of the cooking that we do. A lot of us go to the internet first, pick a recipe, and then cook it. As of right now, you can't just go to the internet and pick a recipe and sync it to your device. But what Whirlpool Corporation has done is we purchased an app called Yumly. Has anybody heard of it? Yumly is an online database of tens of thousands of user uploaded recipes. So as soon as this integration is complete and we push that operating system update to the wall ovens, you'll be able to download the Yumly app, enter your Gen Air 
um, appliance information and then you can pick from any one of the recipes that are there once you pick it it syncs to your wall oven and then the perfect cooking instructions for the recipe that you've selected you can use on your oven as well so you don't even have to download it's as simple as a sink as simple as a sink yep. mm -hmm. so do you have any questions about gen air connectivity Yes. In case of interruption, such as somebody opened the door or a lights out or something, what's going to happen? That's a really great question. So in case the power blinks at your house, when you go into the app, you do have the ability to select what kind of notifications you would like to receive. And it can be simple notifications like, um, let's say you're not on remote start, but you want to know every time the oven starts cooking something, you can have that. You can also have a notification that comes through if there's a power surge. So if you want to know that, it'll, it'll send you a notification for it. Unfortunately, if the power does blink and you have remote start on, it will probably cut that connection. If someone manually goes to interact with it when you're cooking with remote start, for security reasons, because you can't have two people using the same appliance at one time, <coughs> it's also gonna break your connection. Okay. Yes. outside when it's cool instead of warming the air up in the house first and then cool, cool down inside the refrigerator. If the refrigerator only knows that it's negative degrees outside, could you just shut off the compressor and, and suck in some dead air? That would be a really so impressive technology. That would be none of our refrigerators are approved for outdoor use, so it's a non-issue for us. You have to have it in a temperature controlled environment, otherwise you're going to avoid the warranty. So it's going to be whatever they can do oh, yeah. in your house. But I'm, I'm not talking about uh, modifying. I'm talking about if you had the design idea, mm -hmm. if, if the, making something like that. So that Whirlpool actually owns uh, Gladiator yeah. Garage Works. They're, yeah. they're garage appliances. Yeah. Um, they're not part of our connected strategy or anything like that. Okay. I don't know that they necessarily are gravitating towards that sort of cooling system, okay. but they are at least approved for outdoor use. Those are the only ones under our entire portfolio. Yeah. None of our none of our branded stuff is. All right. Great feedback, though. Now, the way that um, a refrigerator cooling system works is a compressor that basically just compresses the air and runs it through cooling coils. Um, we do have very energy efficient versions of this and Gen Air actually has the best cooling in the industry when it comes to that with a constantly running variable speed compressor. Um, what's important to know is that in refrigeration, it's not just temperature control, but also humidity control. So that's why we always run that air through that sealed system. Any other questions? What about the diagnostic side of things? Have y'all ever considered, like after the sale, you know, what happens when a client gets home, maybe there's an error code that pops up on their wall oven. It's not always the wall oven. It could be an opportunity to troubleshoot with our customer care team. So one of the key differences between um, Gen Air and some of the other manufacturers that are out there, we have a dedicated 1-800 Gen Air team that only works on Gen Air stuff. So you're not calling someone that was just troubleshooting another brand's dishwasher or anything like that. We have a, a very highly trained, dedicated care team. They're able to actually, based on the SAID code that the homeowner gives them, they're able to read the feedback from the wall oven. Most of the time they can troubleshoot with the homeowner right there on the spot, but if service is ever required, they're able to order parts prior to that service call, send them to the service company, that way you're one call complete. It's a huge benefit, kind of one of those after the sale white glove service options that we have. And the way that that would work is from the oven or from the app, once it's connected to the internet, you just go into service and support, which you can get from the oven screen or you can get from the main settings. And each individual unit has an SAID code um, once you connect it. So essentially you would just call 1-800-GEN-AIR, it's just 1-800-GEN-AIR, super easy, and you would provide the agent on the phone with that SAID code that would give them access to do the remote diagnostic. Yes. Is there any uh, preventative maintenance or support? I mean, since it's um, there's, smart. There's a use and care guide that'll run through, you know, some of the best practices, it, namely more for refrigerators, because you think about it, refrigerators right. are the only thing in your kitchen that are constantly running. So they do require a little bit of maintenance. You know, you always want to clean the coils once a year and mm -hmm. be sure you're changing out your filter because otherwise, you know, your, your water um, dispensing can either slow down or stop completely 
if you don't change that filter regularly. So there's a couple of things like that. They're all listed in our recent care guide. Some of which the is also available on you. Some of the highlights of that are if you are using an Amazon system, um, you can set up Amazon notifications as well. So on the refrigerators that do have a water dispenser, we have a function called measured fill. Um, measured fill not only lets you measure out a certain amount of ounces of water into the cup, it also keeps track of how many gallons have run through that filter for a really accurate measurement of when you have to change it out. Now, on a normal offline refrigerator, you just get a little light on it that says change filter. On a connected refrigerator in Gen Air, you can set it up to where it sends a signal to Amazon, which will, you can either get the notification through the app, or through Amazon, you can get a notification that it's time to reorder the, fi the, the filter, and you can set that to automatically replenish. So you don't even have to think about the, the, the entire process. You'll just come home to an Amazon Prime box with your filter in it. You just right. change that out. And with the oven, couldn't it be some kind of, you know, the same notification of after it? So many uses it, it, it allows you to clean oven, you know, or, or set. On That's that really grid. at your discretion. Okay. It's all because every every homeowner is different with their cooking styles. Um, so that's really at your discretion. Just whenever it's whenever it needs it. Yeah. Most folks only clean their oven once a year. I I, I don't do it. <laughs> Have you considered what you're gonna do if people complain and say that calling it Alexa is sexist, a woman in the kitchen, and maybe you have an alternative Alex option? I will tell them that right now, um, I know that because I have one, Amazon yeah. offers you options. You can, oh, you can call it computer, yeah. you can call it Amazon, you can call it Echo right. too, I think. Yep. It does have options, and, and I know this because I have a coworker whose daughter's name is Alexa. And so it was getting really confusing, um, so he changed it to say, you just refer to it as Hey Amazon. Yeah. So piggyback on that, you know, I, I have a little boy, and I'm, for safety reasons, I mean, he can operate an iPad, he's only four, better than I can for the most part, right? So safety precautions or anything with the kids starting the oven or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so it is a password protected app. You also do have safety settings on the oven itself where you can lock the control panel so that you know younger kids can't go ahead and start cooking something. And to piggyback on that, the remote, the, the Wi-Fi connectivity mm -hmm. is always there, but your remote start option only stays live for 12 hours mm -hmm. or until someone opens the door. That way, if your son was to put in one of his little play Tonka trucks or something <laughs> and you were trying to preheat on your way home, you don't want to melt that in there. Right, right. So the connection will be broken and you won't be able to access it from your phone until someone either turns the remote connectivity back on or until you get home and you can interact with it manually. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of safety metrics involved here. Yes. No, we do not, but never say never. Okay. We do, however, have a third chef's light, so you can see everything that's in there from far away. <laughs> Actually, we can go ahead and turn on the theater style lighting right from the app. From any screen, you should have the option to turn the lights on. How are they looking? They look like they are almost done. Yes, ma'am. So we might have time for just a couple other questions. Is there anything else we can answer for How you? How about a temperature probe in the oven? Our ovens do have the capability of temperature probe. Um, whether it's in a single oven configuration like that one, if you have a double oven, you'll have a probe in both of them. Even in the convection microwave um, that's in the micro comma unit, you have a, a probe in the convection microwave. And it will send you a push notification to your phone when the probe reaches the desired internal temperature, so it's nothing that you have to, to monitor yourself. You don't have to be in the kitchen at all. All right, so we're gonna grab those cookies. Um, we do have two other sheets of cookies that we're gonna be making, so by the time you finish your rotations with the other vendors, come back around to see us, and you'll have more of them. There's a little drawer right under that cooktop with a spatula. Yes, ma'am. All right, so um, with that, also in the, in the little handout that we gave you, there is a short survey, so if you feel that you would like more information, feel free to leave your contact info and we will um, we'll get your questions answered. But overall, we'd just like to know, since this is the first time we're doing a connectivity-specific training, we would like to know how you feel about the event. That smells amazing. You're yeah, it does. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the lemon for me. Oh, right. Send it on your way. Well, we'll move on to GE. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, once it's nice, we'll get going. We'll run back around and we'll. There's three different types of cookies in here, so this is going to be good.